welcome to our alumni award ceremony with a well, live talk with our alumni award winners of 2022. My name is Bianca Sommer and I'm responsible for alumni relations at IU International University of Applied Sciences. We are very proud of the success of our graduates and we are really, really, really happy to honor them today um, with the alumni awards. We have them here at the campus in Berlin. And it's always great to see for us what our graduates achieve after completing their studies. So this is a really great evening for us. Well, thank you very much, Bianca. And uh, welcome to everyone here and remotely out there in the world and to our winners here. And I'm very happy to welcome Christiane, Christoph, Lars, Laura and Monica. Uh, for Monica and myself, it's actually the second time we see each other because Monica once held a keynote speech at a graduation ceremony about, what, three years ago? Um, so, glad to see you here again. And uh, my name is Mark Zeugner. Um, I'm only here because we coincide to be in Berlin and I'm the campus director of this lovely campus. Um, and looking forward to this lovely ceremony with our guests and our alumni. And as speakers of the IU, we are pleased to welcome Professor Dr. Kamal Bhattacharya, who is Pro-Rector of Research and Transfer. And we have Dr. Thomas Fink here, who will, uh, he was Director of the IU Academy. And uh, Dr. Kamal Bhattacharya will start with the ceremony uh, with insights into the key factors for professional success. Um, Thomas Fink will uh, later um, present the awards. And then afterwards, we will have the live talk um, with our winners. Dear Kamal, please join us on stage. We are looking forward to your speech. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Bianca. Thank you, Mark, uh, for organizing this wonderful event. I think it's great that we are celebrating some of our alumni as a professor at IU. You know, we don't get to hear often enough about all the great things that people are accomplishing after they leave the school. We just see them for the few years that they struggle with us, basically. <laughs> you know, and we're trying to you know, teach something here and there. And then if you see you know, some of them at least to turn out this well, it's kind of scary because it makes you ask yourself, what did you do with your life? <laughs> you know, so <laughs> it's like, it's very, very impressive. Um, you know, I, I had an interesting uh, discussion last night with an old friend of mine. And, um, you know, she is a fairly well-known uh, research scientist um, in sort of the systems biology field and uh, an old high school friend of mine. And, you know, we went out for dinner and at some point, you know, uh, she was telling me something really interesting, which was, um, you know, I'm just learning a new method of something or the other, whatever field she's working in. And, um, and it's so exciting, I could see her. I mean, I've known this woman for, you know, 30 plus years, and um, I could see, you know, there was a sparkle because she's a you know, full-hearted scientist. And I'm like, you're learning a new method, why? I so, said, oh, because AI has completely blown up my field. I'm like, hmm, that's interesting, and that makes you happy, seems like, right? I said, yeah, yeah, you know, the stuff that Google has done with, you know, this protein folding, alpha fold. I don't know if you've heard about it, right? So it's like an old problem. Um, how do proteins fold? Because only in the folded state of a protein are they actually biologically functional. So if you know what the three-dimensional structures are of these proteins, then you can predict misbehavior of those, right? You can think about how to build medicine that, uh, that attach themselves to the proteins and help you cure diseases, but it was always a mystery. How do we find out of all these millions and billions of proteins, however they are, um, to actually find the three-dimensional fold structure? And, and Google built this AI called AlphaFold that basically predicts what these three-dimensional structures are. And that was what she used to work on for 20 years. And now she tells me she is completely excited about the fact that Google solved the damn problem so I can focus on something else, right? Um, and what I thought about this, you know, when I was walking home, I was thinking this is an interesting view of thinking about lifelong learning, right? Because it's really not about what you know, universities tell you, or industries, your employer tells you, which is, you know, 
don't stagnate. Well, as an employer, ask yourself why your employees are stagnating first instead of telling them you know, to lifelong learn. It's a necessity. It's an absolute necessity. And I had a you know, few conversations here today already, which also points me to the same direction that you know, the beauty is, and this is a very controversial hypothesis, I'll admit, but you know, the older you get, the smarter you get. I know I say this as an old guy, right? So <laughs> yeah, you, you see the self-interest that I have in telling you, the older you get, the smarter you get. And the reason is because if you don't stagnate from early on, you go into your first profession, you grow in your first profession, you learn something, but then you also hit an end, you hit a plateau, and you think, no, wait a second, I need to do something else to grow. And you're self-motivated to do this, and sometimes doing that something else to grow requires you to maybe take a course or you know download a few YouTube videos. So whatever it is that pleases you to do so to get to that next level. But every year that experience compounds. It's like what I you know taught my 13-year-old son that if he plays the piano every day for 15 minutes, you know it will exponentially get better. I don't know if it's true, but I think it is, right? It's compounding. We learned this also about finance, right? And it's the same with our ability to solve problems. I can solve problems today better than I could 20 years ago. Even though 20 years ago, I was you know, the prime of my career as a research scientist, right? And so today I can take the same problems, I can dissect them in very different ways because you go through different paths in life. And that to me is lifelong learning, that you challenge yourself. And when I look at our awardees, you know, every single one of them, every one, I think, excelled at just challenging themselves and continue to learn and continue to broaden their experience. And for every year you do that, it compounds. And that's why I think, I hope I'm much smarter today than I was 20 years ago. And let me tell you, the, 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 the most brilliant thing that I think is happening today, and I've been, you know, for the last 25 years in and out of the the IT, the tech industry, you know, in research and development and, you know, building startups, running entrepreneurship hubs, doing advisory services, whatever. And then, of course, also as a professor here at IU. And the brilliant thing is I have never seen anything like what is happening today, ever. Like, literally, I have never seen this, right? And, you know, as you can imagine, right, I mean, for me, you know, having internet at home was a big deal, right? So, so you, you don't know what I'm talking about, but let me tell you, there was a time when you didn't have internet at home, right? There wasn't such a thing as wireless, okay? So I remember that time. And um, when I see what is happening today, where when you go to a customer and you talk to them about you know, whatever you want to sell them and they come back to you and ask you, oh, wait a second, you know, I use this chat GPT all the time or some other tool all the time. What's your position? That's when you know that you have real disruption, societal disruption that you need to respond to eventually. And I think this time around with the advancements in AI, this is going much faster than we had ever imagined. And I've worked in the AI space for quite a few years than we've ever imagined, let me assure you. So, and, and what I find so exciting about it is that we can learn as we go along because these tools are now accessible, right? We can train ourselves to do this. We can, we can figure out how to make them work for us and we can give even Renowned institutions like IU are run for their money because we need to think about this too. What does it mean for our students that they have access to these tools, right? And how do we help them to actually use this productively to, to learn better, to learn in a more personalized way, to learn faster? All the international markets look very different now than they live, looked a few months ago. So it's a huge disruption that's going through Every business, if you're an entrepreneur, this is a question you need to answer. If you are a, in a corporate career, you need to answer this. If you're doing your PhD, you need to answer this. Right? So, and I covered all <laughs> our awardees in their different phases of life, I guess, right? Or I think if you work in an NGO, even there, you need to answer this. I just did a session with you know, uh, 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 10, 15 social work professors, and they are asking themselves this question. You know, how is this helping us? 
to do some of the work that we do, both in teaching as well as in our life as social workers, better. Right? Incredible. So it's the most exciting thing. And I wanted to say, like, um, uh, I wanted to repeat, you know, I'm really excited that we have you guys all as alumni of IU. Um, it is tremendous to see what you have accomplished. Um, it's really heartening for me to see that we have a tiny little bit of a part of your success and of your career. And I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. I really thank you all for taking the time to come here. And I hope we have you know, time to talk and time to discuss and time to spend with each other tonight. And um, looking forward to the next few minutes. Thank you very much, Kamal. Professor Kamal Bhattacharya, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> always. Thank you so much, Kamal. It's always brilliant um, to get Kamal's insights and, and inspirations from my very personal point of view. So thank you very much. Um, now, without any further ado, I would like to introduce our next, or shall I say, guest. Well, he's well known at IU. Um, Dr. Thomas Fink, who is the director of IU Academy. So please join us on stage, Thomas. And uh, Thomas will talk to you about IU Academy, about the awards, and many other things, I believe. Thank, thank you very you. much. Um, Kamal, you really took the words out of my mouth. Actually, you did take some of my words I wrote down, so <laughs> I will improvise now. <laughs> um, I already had the chance to talk to our five incredible alumni today, and I really have to say they inspired me and again made me think about what I achieved up till now, what they achieved, so let's not go there. Um, <laughs> but they also made clear to me that they embody or they are the embodiment of the IU vision, which is everyone can access education to grow. And we really see these, this in these five people in very different facets, in very different ways. Um, so I'm, you will, in a few minutes, you will hear more from each one of them, and I hope you will be inspired, because I really think that they and the message they send can inspire more people to go in the same direction, to challenge what they know up till now, what else there is they could know, do, be in life. And that brings me directly to the, my next point, that is professional but also personal growth, I think, is facilitated through education in every way there is. Like you said, Kamal, it doesn't always have to be studying a bachelor. It can also be a YouTube video. It can also be a talk with someone, like we had this morning, who inspires you to think in new ways or to challenge your conceptions that you already have. Um, and we also know that this is more important, I think, this mindset of of being hungry to, to learn new things, of being versatile, of being flexible if somebody takes your speech and just have to say something else. This mindset is much more important than knowing specific facts in, in specific um, things. And that's also what I hope that we manage to give to you is more than just facts, a way of thinking, a way of critical thinking. I think this is more than anything else what universities have to to educate people in, in the future. Um, because I looked uh, through large parts of my career at what will change in jobs, what new skills will come up. I wrote a study three years ago at the World Economic Forum and now it's completely outdated. <laughs> like Kamal said, everything changed. I would say the last six months have been monumental, especially in AI, but also in other fields. And now we know that a lot of jobs will look very different in the future. A lot of jobs will go away. A lot of new jobs will come. And it's hard to predict which ones. If you think about it, like 20 years ago, if you told someone there will be a lot of um, people will be working in social media, none, of <laughs> none would have believed you. Nobody would have believed you. Um, so what we want to give to you as a present um, is an upskilling offering. And that is what we decided at IU two years ago with the academy. We decided to be a lifelong learning provider. It's not just enough to give bachelors and masters, but we also want to have smaller increments of learning, upskilling courses from, from every length and breadth you want to have in every field you want, you want to go into for personal or for professional growth, for a new skill or for a new role, maybe change avenues completely. It's always exciting. I love to do that every few years. So that's what I want to hand to you now, your, um, 
your diplomas, but also your awards with this upskilling offering. Thanks a lot, Thomas, for the presentation of the prize <laughs> and the IU Academy. Uh, I invite you to stay here and then we can start with the presentation of the awards. Um, now the stage belongs to you. our great alumni who really accomplished outstanding careers or initiated great projects or founded great companies. Um, we start with our alumna, Dr. Monica Soyamanshi. She's the winner of the uh, professional award. Um, and she was first in, in India, in her home country. She was uh, an emergency um, a doctor. And she managed various facilities there. And then she had the courage to venture onto the international professional stage. She studied here in Germany at IU, uh, international healthcare management. And then she got a job at Helios Kliniken, and now she is the executive director of Helios Kliniken. She's really she got a top position there in a few years. So, um, dear Monica, please come to us to receive your award. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, Monica. Our new, or next, not new, our next <laughs> awardee, our next winner is the winner of the Intervenual Award. And I had the chance to talk to him briefly before this event. Um, and when Bianca gave me the name, so of course, looked him up and checked his company. And um, I was rather impressed. And he's uh, the founder and CEO of a company called WingX. Um, it's Christoph Kohler. And um, Wing Access created an important and promising information platform for the aviation industry. And Christoph also is a graduate of aviation management back in the day in Bad Honnef in, in the early years, 2004 through 8, I think it was. I was little. And um, <laughs> I'm happy to meet him here as Wing X has already been able to find more than 150 business partners uh, in, and from over 55 countries. So um, I think no more words necessary without further ado, please Christoph, congratulations to your award. So now we are happy to award Lars Holger Engelhardt with the Sustainability Award. He drives projects with a really very positive um, impact on our environment. Lars, he's graduate of our online MBA programs, founded the Unleash for Future boats, and uh, with this project, which is aimed to make fish, uh, shipping emission free, he and his team are making a really very essential contribution to increasing the sustainability of shipping in Europe. Dear Lars, we congratulate you, and please join us for the presentation. <laughs> Congrats, Lars. The next one is a, uh, I mean, all of those are very special. This is special from our very, let's say, subjective point of view. Um, and the awardee is Christiane Leap. And it's interesting and very special for you. Because um, Christiane is um, the awardee of the Digital Education Development Award for this year. And after completing her master's degree in general management at IU, um, she became a researcher dedicated to exploring the potential and meaningful scope of didactic intervention as an electric learning tool. And we heard about AI, now chat GPT, everything that's coming up, big impact. Um, and especially in the view of increasing digitalization of education, um, we want to honor Christiane's research project focusing on digitally supported didactic intervention. So please, Christiane, join us. Congratulations <laughs> for your award. awarding the Special Mention Award to an alumna for her career in the field of work with a really high social impact. It goes to Laura Spies, who graduated in our social work master program. She was very young, uh, at the age of 27, when she was promoted to director of a daycare center just two months after being hired as deputy director. 
and uh, shortly before she completed her master programs. And with this special mention award, we would like to honor Laura's um, swift career and her professional commitment uh, in the sector of childcare and childhood education, which is really essential for both the present and the future of our society. So please, Laura, join us. Congratulations, Laura. Now, we have seen our awardees, but um, we're all here, here or remotely, to, to hear from them, of course. So, um, Bianca and I now will move slowly over on this huge <laughs> stage. It will take a while between you guys, um, because we want to explore what your drivers were. Um, what was your motivation? Uh, what projects did you focus on, when and why? And, of course, what could be some hints, some advice, some ideas you can hand over to the next generation of graduates, um, hopefully alumni then, uh, to learn from your very own experiences. So, we'll start with you, Monica. Um, you are now working as an executive director at Helios Kliniken and you studied healthcare management here at ISU. So, um, my first question, what were your reasons for starting your studies in Germany and why are you be ISU? So, as you Good evening, first, uh, everybody. <laughs> um, so, um, as you know, that I was working as a doctor and I, I had my own hospital and clinic in India. So, shutting down very settled practice and come and go to some other country was not an easy decision. Many also criticized me, like that, what are you doing? So, I was actually looking for an option uh, which will provide me not only the studies but also a good career after my study. And when I searched it, so one of the options was, of course, uh, IUBH. That time, the university name was IUBH and not IU. And um, I found the good reviews, of course, and the university. And what I found, the most important thing was, like, uh, IUBH never gave us only the ther theory, but it was also a very hands-on training, or you can actually apply the knowledge which you got in the university. And that is the, one of the most important criteria for me to select uh, this university. And then I also spoke with the international office um, because that time I was uh, taking admission from India. And I also got a very good, I would say, a little bit of also certainty from the international office that after my studies, it is the possible to make a good career in Germany. And um, of course, uh, it came true, I would say, <laughs> because it's the proof that with the award that I did something here. <laughs> and um, that. The most are other things I think like um, when uh, the students they want to find some internship or something then that there is an office which helps mostly the international students because when we are, are coming from the different countries it is difficult to have some contacts in the industry so that I think that was also a very good part from the IU so I I would say like that there are many factors which that's why I decided uh, to take an admission at IU. That's so. My next question, what drives you and what do you think is your recipe for success to ex achieve what you achieved? <laughs> <laughs> First, I, I think I have to take a deep breath. Um, what a journey it has been. I still remember um, it was September 2015 when I landed first time in Germany. I did not know what I will do. I even did not know what are the possibilities after my study. So even the weather was totally different. I came from the city where it was plus 30 and I landed in minus. <laughs> so with so much uncertainty and today I'm here after seven years taking this award at the same university. So I would say it is really a very emotional moment for me to be appreciated here. So coming and for that, I really want to like to thank the university. Um, they gave me the opportunity to study in this university. I also thank a lot all my professors. Um, just name a few that time, Professor Barbara Stustgudi was, she was here. And they helped me to refine my skills and knowledge. I also thank a lot, I would say Germany, <laughs> to um, give me the opportunity to actually uh, show my capability and skills and to serve in this country. And 
most importantly, not but not least, of course, I would like to thank and I'm very grateful to my family and friends. And most of them are watching in India live and also in Germany. So I'm uh, very grateful for their support and encouragement what they give me in my whole journey. So coming back to my journey, I would say it has been a fantastic journey so far. And what drive me to come so far here? So I would say the most important factor that drives me is I have a strong desire to achieve, as Professor Bhattacharya said, like um, to develop myself and to improve myself. And it's the main thing on my intrinsic motivation. I keep learning every year something new. Um, and that also helps me to to give, or I can work at the best level, I would say. It helps me to give my best, whatever I do. And uh, the another, I think, um, factors that drives me is, of course, um, um, as uh, along with like improving myself, is um, I give, as I said, like the 100% whatever I do. And um, that motivation is also because of, I wanted to do some sustainable impact. So now actually I'm working for the position or working responsible for the business unit. And there we provide the advisory services to very, very different stakeholders in healthcare industry. So I work with the different governments and the authorities and as well as the hospital providers. And we help them to make the healthcare system as well as the healthcare delivery better. And that, that actually gives me also motivates me that every morning I get up and try to give my 120% to make some positive impact in the society and just to make the healthcare a little bit better everywhere. Coming back to the success factor, I think now you know that one of the factors, of course, um, the high integrity to my work. As I said, like that, I always try to give 120%. I know some people say that that is not a good, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I also try to own my actions. That means that I always try to take full responsibility of the things what I do. Um, and uh, coming back to the point like um, what one's required to do something in the different culture, I think the most important aspect is, of course, the one has to be very flexible and adaptable to be accommodative in this new society or new environment to be successful. So I think that's like a lot of a, a big answer, I, I would say, <laughs> for one question. And once again, thank you so much, IU University, as well as I, um, heartiest congratulations to all of the winners as well. And I'm very happy to share a stage with you all. Thank you so much. Thanks. <laughs> thank you very much, Monica. Um, very inspiring words there, for sure. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and your ideas, Monica. Um, Christoph, um, you founded the company WingX back in 2010 with uh, Richard Coe, I think if I pronounce his name right. Um, it grew quite a lot, so my question really refers to the business at this point. So, um, on the one hand, what is the true innovation about WingX? What was new that WingX brought to the market in the industry? And how did you make it grow within the past decade like it grew? It was a tough one, um, and it's still it's still tough, but it's very exciting. You know, um, talking about innovation. You know, what's the innovation of this business model? I think the innovation of this business model is being 100 dedicated to the problems of our customers, 100 percent dedicated. And what does this mean? Because obviously, you know, creating products, innovation, you you need to be dedicated. But we strongly believe, from our perspective, in data. So data is the new oil um, since decades. Everyone believes in data, everyone is collecting data, but what to do with data? There are thousands of possibilities. We strongly believe in data visualization. That's 100% what we believe in, to make data tangible, intelligent for our customers, and uh, understanding the problems of our customers, working with them, and curating all this information in a system which is allowing to ask all these questions. So JetGPT is just the tip of the iceberg to kind of quote what's going on currently. We believed into this since day one. 
that comes with a very strong you know, belief in technology. But what I get in a second too, it's also belief in you know, what are the problems and how to talk about the problems and you know, really speaking with our customers every day. Communication, no one can uh, you know, replace communication, relationships. So we basically invested in you know, strong relationships with our customers. They tell us their problems. We come up with creative solutions and provide this all in a system where we then believe in technology, in the latest technology, which gets us very excited in kind of managing all this data, make the data accessible to our customers, visualizing the data, and they subscribe to this. That's the Medal of Honor. They subscribe to the information system. That has been growing significantly. In our market, it's the private jet industry, which you know has, has its challenges at the moment, um, justifiably, unjustifiably as well, climate impact, highly questionable. But one aspect of this is, do you really understand what private aviation is doing? We are the only ones who are able to explain on a global basis every day with live data connection what's going on. And um, the core foundation of this is you know, our team, um, our business, my business partner Richard, who is asking questions every day. He is JetGPT in persona. <laughs> He's not old. He's just 50, he claims to be old, but he knows everything, how to put things into context, how to interview people, how to ask the questions. Interviewing, really understanding the problem, making them, you know, finding a recipe for the endpoint, you know, an API. What are we now doing with this information? That's, you know, that's the personal relationship. That is, you know, even in the digital age, you know, it's not replaceable, and that's our key foundation, that we are humans, but working on data and making this accessible. And yeah, we need to monetize it somehow. Um, and we have created the SaaS model and actually see this not just aviation, we can transform this now to every industry, what we have built, data management. We love aviation, but you know, we have a huge future, an exciting future ahead of us. And this is where we are every day motivated in putting this together. Super, thank you so much. Um, super interesting insights. And, and again, as I said, I looked up your website and was like, all right, I really had to find my ways because I'm not into this at all. But <laughs> I'm fascinated by things that I don't understand more by things that I do understand. So apart from the business side, a rather emotional question because Monica got a little bit emotional, which I love. Um, what was your reaction when you learned that you would win this entrepreneur award out of the thousands and thousands of people in the pot for this award? <laughs> You know, first of all, it's, um, um, it's my colleague, Annie from India. He joined me, um, us at Wings, um, very knowledgeable guy. Um, he said to me, you are crazy if you're not going to apply for this award. You are going to be absolutely crazy. And I said, you know, I don't know what to take with an award, right? And, you know, this was but Honif, you know, give me a break. It's, you know, 200 students. <laughs> and he said, no, no, you know, have you seen? This is the greatest, you know, it's the largest university in Europe. And I was like... You know, I'm grateful if you do this. Um, so, you know, let's give it a try. And um, I felt after the announcement really proud, um, first of all, of the team, because, you know, after all, I'm representing the team. I felt really proud to have working with people who are 100% into this every day. <clears throat> he, um, you know, my team, the family, my family, our family, our, my team members' family, they are all passionate about what we are doing. They give us the headspace because you need to dedicate hours, 24-7 almost to the problem. Last week we were on in our server farm fixing a few wires, things went down. Annie's saying, we're going to do it. Richard already writing the next report for shareholders, talking to investment banks. Relentless efforts every day in communicating our products to customers. And you know that is that I'm super grateful that I'm part of this team and um, together with Richard leading this team and at the same time, Having a family, having our family supporting us, that's a, you know, a big asset. And that got me very emotional to realize what we have built over the years. And um, frankly, very proud of our customers' relationships. We went into conference. We get even now the honor. Wings doesn't need any introduction. Everyone knows about one saying to me, ah, Wings is the Bible for aviation, for flight activity data. And you know, this feels really good, to be honest. And I'm happy to share this every day with the team. I was just talking earlier. Now it's tricky to get the people into the business because we are quite advanced in what we are doing, bringing people in. But we are all humans. We want to grow. We want to make it accessible. And that's, you know, I think we are on the right track in having the motivation in the team and now getting more people in. And that's super exciting. And I'm very grateful. Thanks for the invitation. And 
uh, he was a big part of this. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you so much. And just one thing, you said wings now. This is because you just recently changed it to Wing X. We exactly. talked about just right. an explanation. So it's, it's, it's one company. It's one company. Thank you so much for the insights, Christo. Thanks a lot. And thanks to Ani to nominate you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> so Lars, uh, you founded uh, the Unleash for Future Bose FCT in 2004 and you s received various innovation prizes since then. Um, how did you come up with the idea to found Unleash for Future Boats and what is your vision? Thank you very much. Uh, we actually founded Unleashed Future Builds starting in 2017 and then uh, got the business started in 2019 because my background is in the automotive industry and we have seen how the industry was shifting rather slowly but making good progress and uh, I had a very good time at the back then UBH. Uh, it will never change for those old people among <laughs> us here. No, it really, it really is. It, it makes me proud to see how the business of the IU has been expanding and growing and that is very impactful too and very inspiring. Uh, it is part of my career. They helped me to get out of my automotive industry career to reflect what I was doing. They were answering questions and helping not just to gain more insights but also reflect what I was doing. So we were founding Unleash Future Builds to make an impact, to see how we can take the, you said it's so lovely, we get smarter by each year, we get experience and the IU is able to respect the experience of students, not just by adding more knowledge but you mentioned refining yourself to rebuild what you have learned, what you have experienced. And I think this is one of the reasons we started with Unleashed Future Builds, having the confidence to take all the experience to the next level to uncertainty. Okay. And uh, what is your vision with um, Unleash for Future Builds? Thank you. Unleash Future Builds has the strong vision of zero emission shipping and building for both mobility and logistics. Uh, we have presented Zero One, that's the world's first fully licensed build that's fully autonomous, no strings attached, no remote, and it is zero emission. So it is an electric drive with battery based, but with hydrogen range extender. And uh, we learned that the biggest impact we can make is providing parts of the overall solution, like the propulsion drive to every shipyard across Europe and the world. So they don't need to do all the efforts for R&D, but they can now have an option to make retrofitting or even newly built that are truly zero emission. And uh, it is wonderful to see because there's more than 122 million tons of CO2 emissions, 3.7% of CO2 caused in the European Union is from maritime shipping with an annual rise of 14%, so nobody is doing shit. It is <laughs> increasing. And the next level is, it is the backbone of our economy. I did an MBA here, so we take responsibility. When we see 2030 with climate change taking part, in 2018 we have seen the Rhine River with a dramatic loss of water levels. There was an economic loss of 5 billion in just the summer months. How can Germany and Europe deal as an economy when there is no logistics? Logistics is unsexy, but it's the backbone of economy. So all what we try to do is keep things up and running in 2030. So <laughs> basically, that's the vision of Unleash Future Builds, to create a world worth living, even with the worst things ahead of us, to take the challenge and to be emotionally strong, that is more than knowledge at the IU, it's about character building, the inner strength to accept what's ahead of us, to apply new knowledge, new skills. You cannot create the future with the past 20 years. The past decade has created the scenario of tomorrow and we need to rebuild the day after tomorrow to make it livable for all of us. So. We all in a team, we think that this is the one strong vision, zero emission shipping, no biofuels, not getting better, but getting a solution that is 
infinitely working for the next generations. So thanks a lot for the insights. Um, why you had you said you originally you're an engineer, and you studied an online MBA here. Why did you decide to study again? <laughs> the question she's scared because um, I was looking for a university that takes a student with experience in a large corporation that is pissed about the financial system eliminating innovation for the good. Maybe we are too early, but looking at the scenario ahead of us, we are too late. So I came with a troublesome attitude. I came asking questions that a lot of universities were not able to answer on a personal relationship base. And yes, this is a remote university, but it always used to be a people business. And the IU provided professionals who really took the time in 101s and tutorials to get in a discussion on eye level. There's a student with experience and he's asking questions about their books like Fuck Up, Unfuck the Economy and stuff like that, who really wants to understand the trouble we have created to maybe tweak a little things here and there to make it work for the future. And I really honor the efforts that the IUBH and then IU did at this point because they took those student, this individual who was refining himself, asking critical questions and thinking about the future of tomorrow. And I think this is more than you can expect from an engineer. This is more than you can expect from a standard university. Um, it was a special place and it still feels like a special place to be here. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Lars. Thank you, Lars. What, um, you mentioned the, the part of education and um, as we heard, the, the different fields that you guys work in uh, with all your impacts shows that a basic education on whatever level is the source of many types of careers stability wise or whatsoever which brings me to Christiane because as I said before Christiane works in the field of um, digital education which also then is the base in an ever faster moving world more innovative world uh, to bring that education to many many people so Christiane what was your motivation to work in this field why did you choose this and um, what was your mission in digital education that you foresaw Thank you. Yes, the changes in the world of employment and society occur very quickly and uh, require new teaching and learning concepts and skills in education, but also in the world of employment. So I would like to help young people to become able in dealing with new forms of work and collaboration through suitable communication skills, both um, during their studies and later in the world of employment. For this, I am developing a learning and working model to support students in data-driven decision-making. My focus is on visualization literacy skills in the context of data literacy and how these skills can be thought appropriately. So we can say it's a research project at the intersection of business psychology and data literacy. Yes, and my mission, I would like to continue working in the field of education and develop innovative learning scenarios Yes, and I think digitization offers a lot of potential for this. Thank you very much, and it sure does. So, as an expert in your field, um, what's, what's the kind of tips that you can give anyone who is targeting the digital education from your own experience? In my opinion, distance learning requires even more self-discipline <laughs> than <laughs> classic face-to-face -face studies. Um, I have gained experience with both study models and I think everyone should ask themselves which variant um, is suitable to their personal learning preferences. 
uh, in order to be able to implement them in the best possible way. I would also recommend trying out different learning and working techniques and setting up a concrete learning plan or create a learning plan. Especially in distance learning, you have to learn in a very self-regulated manner. So I think it's important to have a, a special learning plan. And also in the learning plan, the learning units should be divided according to priorities. I think this is also important. That's what I also do with my doctoral thesis alongside the job. Yes, and uh, students should ask themselves why they are studying. What is the personal goal? This helps to keep up the motivation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christiane Liebesman. Thank you, Christiane, for your insights. So now, Laura, you are working as uh, director of a daycare center. You wrote me in your application that it is really very important for you to ensure the quality in daycare centers and that you could use uh, the knowledge from your social work studies at IU. So, in your opinion, what is particularly important for ensuring quality in daycare centers and how do you improve it? Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you uh, for the invitation for tonight. It's a pleasure to be here. And um, so, quality in daycare centers are not easily to summarize. So, that depends on so many things and separated in so many parts. So at least that there are a few of them are the cooperation with the parents, the daily life in a daycare center, there are most of safeties and rights who must be implemented in the um, daily life. And so there are just a few of it. Um, in my ex work experience, and I had a lot of station in my work <laughs> experience in the last years, I must do the experience that the quality is very bad at some point. So I set myself a goal to do it better, to going to make a change and to become a hat. That's what I am now. <laughs> so that one, that goal is done. But at least um, the quality of a daycare center de depends on the team and it stands and falls with the team of a daycare center. So what is important for me is to make the daily life easy. Easy in the way that documentary and observations are having sheets who are going to be easily to pick and easily to fill out. And at least there is not much time to get together to make a com com a com complain pedagogical work system and concept. So that's what I'm going to do in my team. Mm -hmm. And at least I have to thank you for my team. Thank you, team. Because all those changes I brought with two years ago now, they did everything with me. <laughs> and so thank you for all of them to increase me and so, yeah to all because i'm very young i'm the youngest in my team and they offered me a lot so thank you to them <laughs> okay and how how did it, you manage it in such a young at such a young age to move from the position of deputy head to the head head of a daycare center um, and yeah what tips can you give to others who want to follow your steps exactly that's a funny story um I apply, applied in 2021 when I moved from Passau to Weinheim as a hut in the daycare center I'm working now, but I didn't get the job. <laughs> um, they offered me the deputy hat and I was very thankful and I took it. So um, at least I could learn two months with the hat very much and after that, they offered me the head position because she was leaving again after two short two months. And before I thought I didn't get the job because 
the lack of my experience and the youngest age I am. And then I, I was sure that is not the thing who is very important for getting a job. It's to be yourself, to be motivated, to show what you can and just believe in yourself and in your goals. And that's everything what I was recommend and will recommend to everyone. Believe in yourself and do what you like to do and be motivated. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs>